Hi, we're Christine and Danny Bellish, real estate investors based out of New Jersey with a background working in sales and marketing in the New York City advertising industry. We never raised private money before, but our first time trying, we raised 1.5 million for a 291 unit acquisition in Cleveland, which was also our first time as members of the general partnership group for a real estate syndication. We thought it might be helpful to share our experience with you. So how did we get into this deal? Oh boy. Okay. So let's talk about how we got into it. Um, the first thing that we did was we found somebody who knows a lot more about doing this than us since Step we had one. never done it before. So we actually met our partner um, in early 2020 and before we met him, we actually didn't know anything about syndication. So he is the one that taught us about syndication. Um, we vetted him, we uh, did our due diligence on him. He was always available to answer any questions that we had. And as we learned more about syndication, we wanted to figure out how we could actually participate. So the first way that we participated was we actually invested passively with him as limited partners in two of his deals. So through that experience, we learned what it was like to be an investor in a syndication um, and particularly an investor that invests with Kenny, our partner. So, um, so that was a great experience to get started. Um, but the other thing that we did was we continued to build rapport with him by actually offering him pro bono um, consulting. So we come from a corporate background in marketing, advertising, and investor relations or client relations. Um, Which we know is really helpful to syndicators and yeah. maybe some skill sets that they might not be as great at. Yeah, so we found a way that we could add value um, to his business and he was very receptive to that. So that's kind of how we demonstrated that, you know, we have something to offer, that we have something to bring to the table and that, you know, that we are smart, worthy, trustworthy, capable individuals also. Um, and then finally, after about 18 months of building this relationship, investing with him passively and also consulting with him for free, um, we just asked for it. We went for it. So, you know, she asked for it. I didn't. Know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Danny was sitting in the other room when, when, when I asked panicking her. in the other room. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, don't ask, don't get. So when it came down to it, we built this great relationship with this guy that we really respect and we wanted the opportunity. So we asked for it. We just said, you know, would there be an opportunity for us to partner with you? Would you consider it? And what would that look like? And he said, yes. So once we sort of got an agreeable notion from our partner that he would be willing to bring us on, it got to the conversation of, you know, what would our role be? And I think everyone's responsibility who's a GP in a syndication is to raise money from investors for the deal. So what he talked to us about was a million dollars as a raise goal for us. And we were kind of like, Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, very lofty goal. And even though we came from uh, a background where we have experience working with very large marketing budgets, we haven't actually gone to our family and friends and loved ones and asked them for this amount of money. Yeah. So we were pretty nervous about it. I even texted Christine from the other room like, I don't know if we can do this. This sounds crazy. But you know what? Like no guts, no glory. And we knew that this was something that we wanted to do with our lives. So what are we gonna do? Say no? Like there was no chance that we were gonna do that. Yeah. So we agreed. Yeah, and I think I think one thing that made it easy for us to agree to was knowing that he didn't really need us. So it was an opportunity for us, but there wasn't really much to lose. Um, and we asked him time and time again, you know, what happens if we fail? Like what happens like if we don't raise a million dollars, are you gonna hate us now? Like we really appreciate this relationship that we've built with you. Like we don't wanna be in the doghouse. And he reassured us up and down that that wouldn't be the case. So after he told us that, and we, you know, we got off the phone, we said we need to think about it for a minute. We talked for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes and decided that even though we were scared, we were gonna do it anyway. 
right? So we called him, we said, we're gonna do this, we're moving ahead, he said, great. He had all the confidence in the world in us, maybe more confidence than we had in our own ability to do yep. it, but we were ready to move forward. So one other thing is we started immediately after that calling our real estate friends who are our peers, other syndicators, mentors in the space to tell them, mm -hmm. hey, listen up, we just got involved in our first GP <laughs> deal and all we have to do is raise a million bucks. Yeah, and right. we, did, we didn't say it like that. <laughs> we, were, we, we knew a million was a lot, but they, they definitely- uh, They, they definitely, agreed yeah. that a million was a lot. So the benchmark for a first time raise is anywhere between like 250 to 500K. Yeah, so if you're doing that or more, it's something to be very proud of. And, and also not something to be discouraged about if you understand or know those benchmarks or those standards. They can be exceeded, it just takes a lot of hard work. And we actually realized that in retrospect, we took our first step like before we even got involved in this partnership. And the first step was really letting everybody know that we are interested in real estate, that we are participating in real estate, that we are investors. Um, you know, coming from our marketing and advertising background, we lean into social media a lot and we try to share as much as possible about our experience in investing thus far with our followers. So um, the other thing too is anybody who knows us, our family and friends, like it's what we talk about all the time. So just naturally it comes up when family and friends ask like, hey, what are you up to? What are you interested in? Like, how's the work going? How's the real estate business? Like it's something that we'd already been talking with people about. I think that's the perfect point is you should always be talking about it. If this is what you're interested in and this is what you want for your future, you should be talking about it all the time and you should always be taking steps towards you know, bettering yourself. And if you want to become a GP, eventually you have to make this your whole life and you're gonna need that community and people around you to know that this is what you're all about and that when they think about real estate, they think about you. Exactly, like if you wanna be a GP, you need to put it out there in the world and let it be known that that's one of your goals. Um, but, so that was kind of, you know, we took our first step before getting involved in the partnership, which was letting everybody know that we're into real estate and that we're involved and that we're interested in becoming GPs and that we've invested as LPs ourselves. Um, but the next real step that we took once we were tasked with this million dollar goal was really just putting ourselves in our investor's shoes. And that was a really easy thing for us to do since we had just learned about syndication a year prior and we had just built this relationship with Kenny ourselves and asked all of these questions and did our due diligence and learned the ins and outs of how a syndication works. Um, and how this deal in particular works. I think that also brings us back to our marketing background also. It's like, every time you do anything in business, you wanna put yourself in your customer's shoes or in your investor's shoes or in your client's shoes, your mm -hmm. audience shoes, right? You wanna think through their eyes and through their lens. And that's what helped us come up with a million questions, so right? Like questions. we had a million questions, yeah. just like our investors had a million questions for us. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we had a partner who was very receptive and so uh, attentive to all of those yeah. questions. And we probably got on the phone with him 25 times before mm -hmm. we even spoke to one investor, mm -hmm. making sure that we crossed every T and dotted every I in terms of what we wanted to understand in syndication. Yeah, and, and about this deal in particular. So like that brings us to the final point is really just making sure that you're prepared. So yes, we put ourselves in our investor's shoes. We asked all the questions that we thought that they would have and we got as many answers from our partners up front as possible so that we would be armed with those answers and be able to educate our potential investors about the deal to the best of our ability. Um, so just, you know, being prepared also helps you be confident when you actually are taking the next step to reach out to people, really studying the deal making sure that you know the numbers and having answers to as many questions as possible. And what you're going to find is that a lot of your investors have very similar questions, right? But then you're going to find really savvy people who have really intricate questions or yeah. people who are familiar with real estate or real estate syndication who have really intricate 
you know, detailed mm -hmm. questions. Specific, very not specific. <laughs> either about the market yeah. or the financials or everything in between. Yeah. So as much as you can understand going into it, the better you will be in each one of your individual conversations. But that also being said, don't feel bad if you don't know the answer to a question. That's okay. Be honest that you don't know and just let somebody know that you're going to get back to them and then actually do that. Get back to them in a timely manner with an appropriate response. This is part of a series where we share our experience and some tips about how to raise private money. We hope this is helpful. If you want to learn more, be sure to like and subscribe and check out the rest of the series. If you have any questions, we're always here.